so uh, proton therapy is known for decades. Yeah? It was a, f a physicist named Wilson who observed first uh, that it might be very suitable to fight cancer. Uh, at the moment, the absolute majority of all treatments is done by a certain kind of radiation, which are photons, this is X-ray, gamma ray, how you name it. Very short wavelengths uh, light, so to say. There are three pillars of, of cancer treatment for localized cancers. I'm not talking about le leukemia, but I'm talking about localized cancers. And this is um, surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. They all come often in combination. So if you are able to, to, to um, uh, put a cancer out of their body by surgery, it's fine, but very often it is not possible, at least not totally possible to do. Then chemotherapy jumps in, and uh, no, no, then radiosurgery jumps in. Chemotherapy is additional to fight metastases, to, to reduce the growth rate of tumors and so on. So there are three different methods, and you can say that nearly 50 or 60 percent of all localized tumors are also treated with radiotherapy. And radiotherapy is to destroy the tumor by radiation, but, say, but spare the healthy tissue surrounding it. And this is not so easy with the conventional method, which is using photons, what you know, know out of X-ray or gamma ray or whatever. Of course, the physical effect of a photon is it penetrates the body, goes into the body, goes out of the body. You increase the dose in the tumor by shooting at different angles. Normally this is done now in modern systems like we have from Varian. By true beam you're going a around a circle with a multi-leaf collimator only irradiating the tumor by shaping an aperture permanently to the shape of the tumor, okay? The disadvantages of photons is they enter the body, are exponentially damped, with, uh, attenuated within, within the body, like normal light if you dive, you know, it, it's, at, it's attenuated and it leaves the body. So a lot of radiation is affecting the healthy tissue surrounding the, 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 the tumor. Protons do a completely different thing and protons are accelerated nucleons of hydrogen. Okay, the most primitive elementary particle around. So they enter the body not leaving a lot of dose. And then shortly before they stop they release a huge peak of dose, the so-called Bragg peak, named for the physicist Bragg. And behind this Bragg peak, there is nearly no dose. So out of that, you can easily understand that if you have an adjacent to the tumor, an organ at risk, as the expert name it, you can irradiate the tumor, but you have no dose adjacent to that. So that's a huge advantage. So you can say that 40 to 50 percent less dose in the surrounding tissue compared to conventional therapy. Conventional therapy is quite evolved, that's not a question at all, and it's, it's clearly the choice because prototherapy is more expensive, but um, at the end of the day there are two things you want to reach by radiotherapy. First of all you want to control the tumor, you want to get the tumor shrink, you got to get the tumor away. This is done by putting a, enough dose to the tumor. This is done by conventional radiotherapy as proton therapy. That's not the point. The point is more the question, how much do I affect the non-cancerous tissue? And these are causing side effects. This could, could cause immediate side effects, like inflammations, like a lot of other problems. It can cause also long-term side effects, especially in children. It could result in growth problems, endocrine problems, mentally disabilities, and so on and so on and so on. So it could be a lifetime afterwards you have to deal with these problems. In the past, only very few systems were working because they were most, mostly done, this treatment were mostly done in research labs. Since the last decade or something like that, more and more industrial, industrial solutions came up to the market. Varian itself was entering the market a little bit later than, for example, others. But we had the big advantage, being not the, not the first mover, to make a real jump in technology. I don't want to go in all the details, but most systems today in, in use are so-called scattering systems. That means you 
shape the beam which is uh, um, trying to destroy the tumor by apertures and compensators. That means an aperture is a, typically a bronze metal which is milled according to the shape of the tumor you see if you look from this direction. So you have to, to, sh to mill a machinery a special device for this angle of incident and this patient and the compensator it's, a, it's more or less a plexiglass device which is a little bit shaped like the tumor forms the beam so that it the, so the beam is destroying the tumor and this is this has certain disadvantages there are two big reasons which we like to improve first of all is quality of care a scattering device has a much lower dose conformity as what I tell you now what we are doing and the second point is if you typically use one two or three angles or as we call it fields you have always to re-enter the room exchange this heavy and slightly activated compensator and aperture probably with a forklift have to put the new in and of course you have all this administrational effort of milling those things this is Exactly. This is a technology also used in photons, or the conventional way, decades ago. What we now do is a completely different technology. We scan the beam. You might know from out of school these old TV tubes, where you have an electron beam uh, um, um, deviated so it fills the screen. This is very similar to that. We know from treatment planning, which is done by computer tomographs, what is exactly the shape of the tumor and then we make a treatment plan and then we treat the, the tumor with a scanning beam that means we generate a pencil beam and this pencil beam is painting then the, 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 the shape of the tumor you do that by starting at the most distant part of the tumor the so-called distal part of the tumor medical device then you paint the tumor and then you reduce the energy by reducing the energy of the protons the penetration depth of the proton is also lowered. In this way you can paint layer by layer of, a, of, of the tumor and fill the tumor with dose. On the other hand, they are quite big machines. Yeah? You have to, yeah, we are, and now I tell you a little bit about our solution here. There are others on the market with the scanning solution. The proton beam is generated in a so-called cyclotron. This is an um, in our view, we have a quite small cyclotron because it is superconducting. It's using superconducting coils like in nuclear magnetic resonance systems. And in the cyclotron, you regenerate protons, and the protons are then accelerated by electrodes in the cyclotron. And the protons are forced on a circular or spiraling path by a very strong magnetic field perpendicular to the plane. So the protons are accelerated turn about 600 times around and then leave the cyclotron at 60% of the speed of light. Which means as if they have passed an acceleration of 250 million electrons, uh, uh, volts. So they are coming out with 60% of the speed of light and afterwards with another device we slow them down to the exact energy we need um, relating to this to, to this to this uh, uh, to this uh, to this target so for example with 250 MeV you would have a penetration depth and tissue of about 37 centimeters lowering the energy you can lower the, the penetration depth and this way you can you can do it okay so um, typically you have a cyclotron you have this beam line bringing the protons to the patient and what you see here is a so-called gantry which is a name out of conventional radiography. That means the beam is entering this gantry and then this beam can be, deviate, can, be, can be brought to the patient all around the patient with a 360 degree de rotation by the fact that you have an additional freedom of choice to rotate the table, you have the full space, spatial angle to deliver the dose. So you can find the exact best angle of incident to hit the two more and not have any other organs in this path. So that is a very important device. By the way, this is a huge structure. It, it weighs more than 200 tons, yeah? but it's extremely precise. So we can, we can bring the break peak, yeah, where the dose is coming out, 
exactly to a position within a radius of one millimeter overall accuracy and the accuracy is the accuracy of the beam but of course also the accuracy of the imaging system because normally if you go to um, if you go to um, the question how, how is such a treatment done it's very similar to what is done in conventional radiography you know before by computer tomography exact the location and the shape of the tumor yeah so you first of all, before you do that, whatever you, if you do proton therapy or photon therapy, you first have to make a 3D image of your body, of the tumor region, so you know exactly the size, the position of the tumor. Afterwards, the patient comes in, is, is laying on the table, and here are imaging devices in. And the big advantage of our system is, you cannot only make a 2D image, that means a projection image, like you know it from X-ray, you can also turn around the gantry and use the imaging devices in the gantry to produce a 3D, so cone beam CT image. That is very helpful because with this projection radiography, you see mostly only bones. You don't see the soft tissue. With a computer tomography image, you also see soft tissue. So you can localize then exactly there is the tumor and then you apply certain shifts to the table, which is done more or less automatically. So um, at the end of the day, you make this first, this positioning by imaging with X-rays again, where is the tumor, correct the position. By the way, normally you pre-position the patient that there should be not a big correction. You know where, where the tumor is and often people use blue bags where they lay in and there's, some, in, in some, there's a certain fixation, but that depends on the on the clinical provider what his best solution is to that. Okay, so at the end of the day, you then know exactly where the tumor is, you have positioned the patient, and then you fire the proton beam and destroy that. You do use several angles, and of course, like in ra normal conventional radiotherapy, you have several fractions, so you do that over 20 days, and so on and so on. So, um, this is more or less the technology. I think uh, with Varian we, are, um, we have a very, very good system concerning this position accuracy, the, um, um, the dose rate, which is similar to or even sometimes higher than in conventional radiothera um, radiotherapy. So this system is clearly and has clearly huge advantages. On the other hand, it has to say that telling you that we have to accelerate protons to the 60% of the speed of light and, 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 the systems are more expensive. So one of the biggest hurdles of this market is there is a huge financing issue. I personally think, and this is the reason also Varian jumped onto that, because Varian is market leader in conventional therapy, they said, yeah, yeah, we are clearly market leader worldwide in, 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 in conventional therapy, and the chance that proton therapy will be the method of the future is high. But of course, all manufacturers are working on making the system more affordable, you know. At the moment, this is a huge investment and not everybody is able to do that. So there are big organizations which can do that. There might be um, uh, government uh, um, organizations who can do that and so on and so on. But there are more and more smaller private organizations who jump on that. So we all work on reducing the costs of these systems and if the costs are coming further down uh, I personally think that um, if we don't find the miraculous drug against all cancers uh, within the next 10 to 15 years proton therapy will have a considerable part of uh, radiotherapy so I think that the, the advantages are very very clear to everybody.